Greetings, greetings, market rebels. Welcome to this week's macro measure. It is Sunday, May 19th, 2024. I think it's about 10 a.m. here on the East Coast. Anyway, um, I'm Wayne. Let's get into it and uh, let's get on to other things. Here's our trusty disclaimer. Here is our trusty intellectual property rights notice. And here's kind of a pared down uh, notes slide for the week. Uh, I'm going with the theme of lethal contrast because uh, it's and sticking with old uh, Savoir Faire because there's egregious shenanigans everywhere, if you ask me. Uh, but that's really just background stuff for me. And uh, hopefully for a lot of folks that watch the video, because you can't really let that stuff get in your way um, in the in the very short run, which we operate in most of the time. Uh, and most of the services. So I think you've got to uh, deal with that by just realizing that price action and how the charts are unfolding are are really uh, what will lead you and, and keep you on the right side and allow you to, to benefit from price changing ch changes, excuse me. Um, but a good way to combat your disbelief if you're having trouble, which I think a lot of a lot of people are, is to use slightly in the monies, and then just roll, roll, roll. Uh, that's one thing I just, we talk about it a lot, but if you're newer to these videos, you might say, well, you know, what, is, what do they mean? It just means that if you go with a slightly in the money, you can something, let's say 60 Delta, you can get yourself in a position pretty quickly on any kind of a pop where you can start to roll to out of the monies, slightly out of the monies at that point. And that way you are, you have a buffer or a cushion between losing on that particular trade and um, winning, right? And it's it's a lot more comfortable uh, for folks that really have a hard time believing in what they're seeing. But having been through this many times and struggling at with it myself at first, I think it's just an important reminder because I hate to see a lot of people miss out on opportunities um, because they have a problem with what's happening economically. And just remember, we often have the reminder, right, that the economy and the stock market are not the same thing. And the stock, the stock market does a phenomenal job at proving that over and over and over again, at least to me. So I just wanted to mention that. But I think the big stuff that we've got coming on here is you've got bulls in control, right, clearly after last week's news, sort of news-driven move. They've got their the thing we've been waiting for for a while, thinking maybe they won't let this thing go down at all, <laughs> which they haven't too much anyway, uh, since we bottomed out and started rallying again. Uh, that NVIDIA is next week, right? Their earnings are coming out. I think it's 522 after the market closed as per think or swim. Um, and the we have that like double entendre situation with uh, Savoir Fair here, because I think the lethality uh, is... Uh, basically, right, you could miss out on what could be a great rally if we do really break out and hold above the former highs. Um, at the same time, that could get a lot of late cycle people in. Uh, so that could end up being lethal for them, right? So it's all about your timing, all about your management, as we all know, with folks with experience all know. But you've got the second year of four that we're in. I mean, this is the second best year of the four in terms of the presidential cycle. So that's where we're at. It's been a good year. They were in. They were on the ropes, and they marched it right back using Powell, using news. Just as we always discuss, you know, got to keep that calendar handy because this is the structure or uh, the skeleton that they tend to hang their hat on in terms of well, we did, the move, the market moved up, and they've got a good, uh, a, well, at least for a lot of people, a believable rationale they can point to that came from an economic development so on and so forth. Of course, as many of you know, uh, that have been with us for a long time, or traded for a long time, a lot of that short term information is revised later, and never really matters at that point, even if it was dramatically overstated to create positive effects. Very few people seem to care about later on that it was bogus. But that's just, the, you know, that's the nature of the beast. So just keep that in mind. Um, we still have to consider all those scenarios we talked about last week. I don't see the MAG-7 as being dramatically overbought. We'll talk about that on the charts, but there's room to run there, That which means to me that there's room to run in this market if they if they can muster it. 
Um, the critical things that I like to watch are all on, basically, they're on life support. We'll look at those. Um, the VIX, like I said last week, you closed with an 11.99 uh, handle. Last week, it was, um, 12, I think, a 12 handle or on the way to 12. Right, So this is usually a pretty low level. The only lower lower level I've got in recent times was like 11.81 somewhere near uh, somewhere last year or something like that but we could even look at that too but these these especially you know D, dxy tnx are really on they're really on or very near critical support for where that argument might be over and it seems like it's flying in the face of certain realities but that's how the market's starting to price things and i like i said i started taking it more seriously once i heard what Powell had to say I think it's hypocritical of what he said and his his sort of pivot, if you want to call it that. But, you know, that's nothing new either. Hypocrisy's man's best friend when dogs aren't around, it seems like. But anyway, one side of the ship is getting really crowded. Um, that, of course, is the bull side. We'll take a look at that. Uh, there's stretching that's going on between stock prices, you know, that are being helped by bogus statistics hype, manipulation, some of the usual suspects, in other words, versus the consumer realities. That's what I'm warning about. That's sort of the savoir faire thing as well, right? Because it's this 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 uh, dichotomy, right? It's a dichotomy, I guess you could call it. So I just want to remind everyone that the rate cut performance reminder is there for a reason, right? Which is that once once these bulls get what they're, they, they're after, which is the, the fact that the Fed's going to start dropping things, that's usually problematic, right? Where I, I think we've mentioned this almost every other week at this point, but there was a guy who sounds like a name that may have played in the Yankees farm system. I said it before, but it's like Nick Majulio or something like that. I can't remember the dude's name, but anyway, he worked at Ritholtz at least at one time and he, he checked into what happens in terms of S and P, I believe performance after one year, uh, subsequent to when the rate cuts begin and it's negative double digits. So a lot of, it's a lot of, I guess, sell on news or recognition, right? That uh, the things, the problems are unfolding in the economy. That's why, you know, the Fed needs to do what they're doing. So just keep that in mind because we could have that. They get what they want. It's been a great year and then you have trouble. But remember, as we noted last week with April being, pretty bad when we talked about that we thought there was sufficient damage to justify or allow for a legit rally to begin that would be a recovery and see what would happen and i think that is that really poor april it helped make may a better month than it typically is in this fourth year of the cycle at least so far we'll see and they still have this catalyst coming this week so this could be this could be anything we'll see but i mean clearly this is a big deal with uh, NVIDIA op occupying the place that it does in the current market. Um, just the other reminder too is, so there's the rate cut performance reminder, but there's also, if we adjust for inflation, uh, this market could still be higher, significantly higher. And that probably nothing could be more, more uh, positively adjusted out of the big four than IWM. So just remember that there's all these things out there, right? As usual, as usual, which I'm just reminding these things, are always there, but uh, that's why, right? You are smart to roll. And if you're riding the market long term and you're using deep in the monies, it's just smart to consistently roll every time the market takes a leap. You know, because you just you're able to to bank some of the profits and reduce your risk all along the way. But eighty percent of the market is not is really still below the all time highs, roughly speaking. So if you adjust those, and then you see you know, other things catch on like canaries, like I'm calling them IWM and XTN. Then you have something that's really, it's very, if it's not really a, a start, the start of a bull market, it sure se would seem like one. I think those are the only missing elements, but just remember, we've been talking about those precious metals, cup and handles for, well, for quite a while. I mean, years and years and years, but we've also highlighted them more and more since the fall. And those things are really looking good. Um, they might be a little bit overbought in the short run, but that's something to keep an eye on. I think commodities and materials are still worth keeping an eye on. I still see some paper appearing in UOA and the charts continue to look pretty good. But I do think, right, what's really going to seal the deal if this is a real legit bull market that's got 
years in front of it to run will be that they get IWM to finally break out, which we talked about many times. And they also start to see better performance out of those transports. So we'll, we'll see. I'm leaving a lot off the table, but we did cover that much. This is just a reminder of last week, um, if you want to have that up there. And uh, actually, I don't think that is last week. I might have over. Oh, this is it right here. Yeah, I must have must have overclicked. My bad. So I just did some highlights on here. On the orange highlights are really just about like a lot of things that ended up being worth worth highlighting. The, you know, in the weekend video. So and just reminders, things like that. But yeah, a lot of these things are a lot of these things are you know still there. But I'm not going to belabor that. So on that, let's get into a brief pause, and then I will go back into the charts. Uh, let's see the charts and I'm going to go into tabs as well. So what I want to do, let me get my charts up too, though, because I'd rather have those, uh, rather have those working when we, we get through this. Oh, come on, come on. Where is that there? That's not it. This is it. Okay. So we're going to start out. So when you see what's coming, uh, there's quite a few tabs I'm going to whip through quickly. We haven't done this in a while, but I think this is good. And it'll kind of, I hope, back up uh, what, it'll back up what we just kind of checked out there on our, our weekly slide. But here we've got, uh, here we've got Tom Lee. You know, he's, as all of you know, the place Tom occupies. Um, he's expecting may to end strongly and then it the way the market looks it, it's hard it's hard, you know you can always have the false breakout you can always have the lower high you can always have the double top you have to mention those so people that are new prepare for those scenarios but you have to admit that things at this moment look good it would probably be a very big surprise and letdown if suddenly something was amiss at nvidia right the way that <laughs> i guess the way you can see uh electricity demand supposedly being through the roof but that's what Tom's selling. I don't think anyone's surprised by that. So we could still see more. We've got, you know, about two full weeks of trading left. So it's already been a good recovery month. And that's common where a really rough month is followed by a nice recovery. Uh, this has been quite a recovery so far. But what I want to do really is talk about other factors. And you can see that there's big inflows into equities with that particular graphic. And you can go back and find these on your own. Now you've got this put call flush, right, too. I'm just trying to make the case that this is becoming a boat or a ship that's got a lot of people on one side of it at this point. Okay, so that's also, remember, that's contrarian. These are, a lot of these things tend to be contrarian where this looks so good that it's not good, okay? So if you're new, um, then, there's, then there's this one, right? Th this is the financial conditions index. This is something that, not just us, of course, but everybody has been highlighting because you can see how easy they are, right? Con financial conditions are right at the former highs. In other words, it, they're they're easy. And uh, this is helping to support the stock market. We've talked about that. This is one of the counterbalances to all the negative stuff that a lot of people uh, know is out there. Anyway, right, this is what's going on in terms of Right. This is the in, in just four years. Right. The government spending now exceeds the combined spending of all this. Right. So this is this is one another factor that's driving things. Right. The government. I don't know what just happened to that. Charlie Bellello one. It must have gone. I'll see if something else pops up. Oh, well, we'll just skip over that. But this is another sign right? where you haven't had a down day since um, a two percent down day. This is one of the longest strings of that. So if you this. If you start putting two and two together, you kind of feel like there's forces marshaled, right, <laughs> to want this thing higher. And that only makes sense because all administrations tend to do this. I just, as we keep noting, I think it's just more and more egregious what's been going on. I don't think it's a coincidence, but whatever. It's, it, the administrations do this. And in this fourth year, it's, uh, it's well, it's certainly not a free market. But anyway, um, Here's the uptick, right, where you're starting to see an uptick in uh, the three-month rate of, of core CPI that's getting, being pointed out there. So the whole this whole thing where they're trying to get it down again and talk things down, 
that's the power center demand. But trying to talk things down on inflation, uh, you know, the data really hasn't. I don't think the data has confirmed that that this is the way to go. But they're they again. I think it's a hypocritical thing if they do start to cut. It really, but I, I still think they 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 may. They, I, I think the odds favor them doing something uh, a few months out. You know, maybe after the summer's over. Uh, I'm not in disbelief anymore because it wouldn't surprise me the way everything's become in this country. I'll leave it at that. Uh, anyway, there are some cracks out there, right? This is obviously a big region in terms of population. That's your your north, the, really the start of the northeast. Um, there's just you can check these out. America's working class is finally up against the wall. I think people sort of know that, but it just good re to reiterate it. China's broadest credit metric just turned negative, right? So things in China, people have been thinking like, oh, Chinese are going to stimulate this from that, and that's going to start pulling it out. Well, maybe, but it's starting to look starting to look pretty rough, or even rougher, I should say. There, um, folks are tapping credit, and you can see that the interest <clears throat> payments, right, are non. This is non mortgage, so this is right. This is folks going bonkers um, in terms of. Mortgage interest is almost as high as the dot. I mean, the uh, real estate bubble peak, and but you can see the consumer uh, consumer interest payments are aside from that are are dramatically up there. Uh, delinquencies are starting to tick up. You can see credit card delinquencies are starting to go. Auto loans are starting to go right. So these are if you miss some of the webinars, there's another view of it from Charles Payne posted. Um, common man. Right, what what people are paying versus their wages. I think it's worse than this, but even so, right, you can just see the lag is just there. Uh, there's credit card default rate of small lenders have hit a record high of 7.8%. 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. <clears throat> Furniture sales have rolled over hard. You look at the previous rollovers that they're pointing out, right? Not a good sign. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh yeah, so there's another person trying to make like, trying to make the old crash alert. There. So they're doing a comparison between uh, this this year and 2008, right? Which all of you probably remember was 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 uh, it peaked out? I think he peaked out in the market in the fall of 2007, like it shows here, and then it didn't really completely take hold and completely get annihilated really until the spring of 08. And then you really didn't bottom, I believe, until the March of 09. So things can happen quickly once they start to roll over. Of course, Zero Hedge pointing out PPI revisions have been pretty heavy um, right there. So uh, there's commercial, this is because I mentioned commodities, right? This is something that you could keep an eye on, but there's big bets against certain things, uh, just like there's big bets, big bets against uh, silver, gold and silver, and now copper as well. And there might be others. And I heard cocoa as well. So you could have some really bizarre uh, price action in a lot of these spaces where people are super short <laughs> and there's uptrends in place. So just keep an eye on that. Um, energy inflation is the highest in 40 years, uh, just as data center and AI demand surge. So again, uh, that's going to be rough for consumers um, if you know if that continues to, to worsen. Uh, jobless claims, there's your initial claims. Uh, there's the S&P, right? And so th they're making the case that uh, things are about to start upticking and uh, that this is kind of like the uh, the contrast I'm talking about. There's a lot of things out there that are like this, where um, there's signs that things are starting to inch up, and uh, yet you've got the market again, as as it typically is, oblivious or care carefree. Um, here's insider selling. You can see that um, this is a meme stock versus inflation comparison. You get the idea there. This one is interesting too because this is there's four graphics here, but you've got uh, a couple of different things to look at. Um, you've got overweight of stocks is getting up there, not extreme, right? But it's starting to get up there. You've got um, in terms of saying global fiscal policy is too sim simulative, right? Look at this. This gives you an idea of what's going on, why I'm 
one of the reasons why I'm always saying there's egregious shenanigans because there are, you know, they're, 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 they're basically supporting everything this way. Um, 31% no landing, 11% hard at landing. So most people are buying into soft landing at this point, which again, I would tend to, to look at contrarian, right? Because usually the consensus is, is, is it is a tough place to be. Um, but again, we'll see. Uh, leading economic, leading employment index, um, you can see that. You can see how this rolls over in front of recessions. That's pretty much speaks for itself. Um, retail sales flatlining, that usually happens in front of a recession. Uh, Druck and Miller, a lot of folks probably heard this one. Druck and Miller unloaded his uh, 441 shares, 1,000 shares. I think Someone called him out. I think Ryan told me someone was calling him out for not selling everything. And then he reported or someone else noted that he did sell everything. So I don't know what that means, but you don't usually see that, especially in front of EPS, the way that was. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know what to say about that. Um, this is, I'm probably not sure what I wanted on that one. Um, this is more important to me though. This, right, there, the talk of all this stuff is one thing, but I think Powell's ready to go full full on hypocrite is why I flipped a few weeks back. But uh, th it's just not there, right? The, the reality of them trying to really roll rates down uh, after this is this kind of inflation has been in place and has been sticky. Uh, this is not, you know, this is not good. Um, that they're, but th that's, that's what they're, they think they're, I guess they're indicating they're going to do and people, people are pricing it even more so that way. So whatever, uh, this one here, I'll tell you, so this was this Ed Dowd guy. He's got major problems. Uh, you might want to check into like, he's, he's apparently a fairly respected guy. He's not in, not a, official anymore. Burry's back again. He's pointing out. The, the, the banking problems that we keep hinting at um, in some of the newsletters and well, on the videos like this and notes I put in, that's there, right? It's still there. It's just people don't care about it right now. And that's the, that's the case. And then just making the point, right, that with the large cup and handle that's decade and a half, roughly speaking, in the making in silver and gold and the inflation we've seen and so on and so forth, um, this is how cheap uh, gold equities have been. So you're looking at incredible value if you believe that story could start to unfold. You could find stuff like this all over the place. I'm not going to speak for the dude or testify to the dude's <laughs> um, uh, legitimacy, but just keep in mind that there's uh, a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of people trying to really push the silver squeeze. He's just one of them. So again, if you get involved in this, and I wouldn't blame you, we've had paper, we even have ideas in that are current in SLV and a couple other things. But if you get into that, just be roll, roll, rolling. That's that's all I really wanted to communicate because when these people start to push this, it can still have that big upside movement, but it can come down very quickly too, right? When this whole gang starts getting involved. So just be careful on that. What I wanted to show here getting into the charts is this weekly chart here, starting with a weekly chart of the mag seven and they're right. They're right there, right? They are right at the all time high. And they've got this, they've got these earnings from NVIDIA this week, right? So they've got a catalyst there that could start to propel this thing through and uh, we'll see. But in other words, People are saying this has already run too far and all that. It could be a double top. I'm not ruling out a double top or even a lower high in the market or something like that, depending on how you want to look at it. But I'm just saying, like, let's not forget about the other side, too. Right. I'm not saying you can't roll over. I'm just saying, you know, there's there's this this could this is fine in my book in terms of I see nothing that's really wrong. I I, I see it more positively um, on the weekly chart than I do uh, negatively. Right, so they have a nice little pullback on the MAG7 here to the rising 10 day there on this daily chart. And so I'm charting these because you know, these weights together are pretty much it, right? Overall, we know the market can, can uh, indices can, can uh, be uh, dramatically impacted by these large weights and um, it can mask a lot of problems. 
but they have a nice pullback here. They made a new high, have a nice little pullback. And if they get it geared up again into N NVIDIA uh, or NVIDIA on Wednesday, then, um, you know, who could be surprised by that? Uh, maybe after the kind of week we saw, there could be a little more profit taking, but this really doesn't look atrocious, right? You're above all the SMAs. They're all about to write the ship where you'll have the shortest on top of the next longest and so on. And they're all going to be positively sloped. And in fact, they all are right now. So this is doesn't look bad. And that's a lot of the weight of the market. So just, I would just keep that in mind, but just also know, we talked about those four scenarios, right? You've got legit breakout, you've got false breakout, you've got lower high, and not in here, but in general, and you've got um, a double top if you get a very similar uh, high. So you've got all that to keep in mind, but you're there, and I don't see things being overbought to the extent where, no, there's no way this thing can realistically go through. There was a time when I kind of was mentioning to Greg and uh, Ryan, and uh, they were, I think, mentioning it themselves kind of in the Rebel Pit discussions that we were short term overbought. I saw some RSI readings on the hourly that were near 86 on Qs and Spy at one point. Now, by the time that hour finished, I think they'd already started selling it off, but they were getting up there on a short term basis. But look, they made a new all time high. Things can't be that bad, right? They really can't. So you took out the highs, you're holding above the highs as of now. And if you're a bull, you would love to have, I think, a week Monday come back and really touch this former these former highs, hold there, right? And start working your way back up on Tuesday into Wednesday for NVIDIA, and then start to do the exclamation point um, dance, you know, that, hey, this is wonderful. Look what NVIDIA did um, and jam, jam, jam. So there's still plenty of potential here. And as I said before, if you inflation adjust this, that ought to make more sense to you that, given how many more dollars are out there and at least stocks in theory, whether it's corporate botanists producing the rosiest pictures possible or not, stocks do produce cash flow and well, profitable ones do. And uh, that's worth something because at least right profits are helping you keep up with what you're losing and purchasing power on the other side. So naturally people are willing to pay for that and they're going to keep paying more and more right uh, as time goes by as long as the profits are maintained and i think they will be i think the layoffs in a lot of cases they're not a good sign for folks and i hate that but bottom line is that it typically works out well for the company where when they do have layoffs they're able to boost the bottom line and uh, at least in the short run it doesn't seem to hurt them all that much when they do that so it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me knowing that the the bar is set for beats anyway, right? Three quarters of the time, roughly, you're set to beat. Um, so to me, right, they can keep perpetuating that. The summer is typically pretty good here in this fourth year that we're in the presidential election cycle. Um, I would just become a little worried if we did really zoom somehow this month to end on this really powerful note that you would be at that point short term overbought. You might need to see a June that's a little more, uh, a little more corrective, right? Where you get a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of pullback, and then you start gearing up for what can be a good run into earnings in July. You know that would be one scenario, but that's an if then. So we'll we'll try to cross that bridge when we come to it. But this was very overbought. It, they definitely backed it off. You're getting towards overbought on the daily on SPY, but you're not really egregiously overbought yet, but you are getting there, right? So uh, just keep that in mind. So that does make it a little challenging. Of course, when you consider a lot of the negative information out there, that psychologically makes it challenging for a lot of people, which is why I included my slightly in the money roll, roll, roll note for the week. Um, this is, you know, you've got gaps galore, Proving once again that gaps matter only when the gang decides that they matter. Uh, gaps also matter and other things matter when when the gang basically decides they matter. You know, so um, after five days, when uh, we start almost just forgetting if there was a gap, right? The, the chances of like factoring in gap closure no longer really matter after there's been the gap plus at least four to five more days 
I can't re recall exactly what the timing was on it, which is why I'm labeling it or describing it that way. But bottom line is, right, this gap, I would have just said, forget it after several sessions beyond it. That, okay, that's not going, that they're not going to close that soon. And you could just tell they were in that mode, right, because Powell gave them the green light. Uh, you had, you know, earnings were starting to come out. They were able to really hang in there with even though maybe they were, there were some early disappointments, they were able to keep the market buoyed regardless. But that looks really good. Here's some of my former support and resistance lines that I've got in here. And you can just see that all of those are way, way, way to the north. They're all way to the north, right? So even if we extrapolate on a nice angle that's similar to right this slope of this uptrend and we just go like this, you're looking at going up significantly from here still before you would hit any resistance i'm not saying it has to touch the line i'm just saying that in my career i've left lines there since i got started it's a long time ago and these lines somehow end up mattering i don't know how but they do they just end up mattering in the end um a lot of times which is why i had you know pretty good feelings about talking about new all-time highs after they bottomed the market out last fall because I looked at it and said, okay, that was pretty significant. In other words, what happened here was pretty significant. And if it's over, it wouldn't surprise me that these guys marched to new all-time highs and uh, you know, maybe even beyond. Uh, at that point, I, I think we had a cocktail hour where I, I talked about that. And um, you know, so even if I was, even if I was like, wow, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing all along the way, it really wasn't a shocker because I've seen them do this so many times. Um, but now, right, you've got to look out for, okay, you're above here. You've got to look out for, does it hold? Everybody wants to see this hold. That's a, that's a bull and clearly, right. Your first sign of a crack would be here. I would put the line right about here. If you believe in lines and I'm a big believer in lines, but anyway, I would say, look, they've got to hold that Friday low. Otherwise, right, you do risk, you're still within the four to five day window of this gap being closed, but you really want to see this thing find support. Now, the 10 would be rising into that. This is the former high. The gap would, there would be a gap close and often they reverse after that. So if there is a pullback, I think you're looking at like a 1%. If it starts to get worse than that, totally different story. But I think if they do put a little pullback together, it's probably going to be about a 1% pullback if they were to do it technically perfect the way a lot of bulls would want to see a lot of people would love to see the quick gap closure find support where you'd expect it to hold start going again kind of it. so let's see maybe the early week we get something like that and then they start to use the 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 run into the nvidia eps is like let's get it let's get things ramped up and if those come out satisfactory the conference call is satisfactory or better then let the games begin but they've got a lot of people right on the ropes here. Um, and there's not a lot of, I think what we saw the week before, I think it could have been a lot of hedge funds reshorting, thinking they're going to sell in front of these highs. Cause I was wondering why is this market sort of like listless? It wasn't doing that much. It really wasn't powering. And I, I kind of thought we had a week close on the prior Friday. And I'm like, that's not really the way that they usually end a good week. Um, but, but, uh, the news really propelled it this week again, right? That's the, that's what happened. But yeah, I thought, okay, maybe there's some hedgies that are just leaning into this, waiting for people to try to buy to break out and they're just going to sell. Maybe they thought there was going to be a rollover quickly uh, due to the gap or something. I Or maybe they just don't like the market in general, which wouldn't surprise me the way a lot of these hedge funds end up positioning themselves. But I think, right, you've got bullishness going bonkers. You've got put call. A lot of those early signs and maybe I think hedge funds having sold, we'll see when, if I get some information, I'll be sure to share that. But I think that could have happened. And so you've got the usual suspects, but you're just not, you're just not egregiously overbought. And that's why I think you have to also allow for there's more potential here, right? There's just more potential in this market uh, because you had this corrective phase. You took care of a lot of the, excesses I think that were in there and you had that corrective uh you had that corrective behavior and you've moved up and through um with the aid of right I think with the aid of clearly uh the news cycle in the form of PAL and then um the PPI CPI I guess it was PPI this week 
or CPI. I can't remember. It might have been both for all I for all I remember. I'm so busy with some short uh some short candidates, uh squeeze candidates that there was so much UOA that was trying to jump on that short squeeze uh meme stock type thing. And that you got to be all over that when that ignites because it happens quickly and there's money to be made, but you uh it's sometimes you just can't overstay your welcome. That's the cardinal sin. You've got to get in and quickly and roll, roll, roll. And then when you see things ebb, you know, you're done and you better you're better off like re-entering um it rather than trying to just stay in, stay in, stay in with those things, I think. But look, it's very similar behavior in the queues, right? And I would just say if, if, if this is if this is, you know, one leg here, we can take a leg from here to here, kind of where we've got the fib. And then we could take this corrective, you know, leg and we could say there could be a whole nother leg. You can see that really, if this really is the start of another leg up in a bull market, there's a, there, the next leg up is, is, is going to be, you know, much longer than where we are now. And they're set up pretty well, I think, right, given the summer performance in this fourth year of the cycle. So everything's sort of set up well. I'm just kind of worried about the usual stuff that's always out there, which again, that always tells me to be disciplined in terms of, you know, don't don't get in with a 70 delta call. Let the let the delta on the call get to 98 and then stay in that call. You know, that that's my way of doing it. I, I don't like it when I feel like there's problems out there. And I do feel like there are problems out there and there's geopolitical. And I'd rather be more of a roller, right? I'd rather at least if you want to stay in the money, fine, but probably, you know, roll from 98 to 70 again, you know, keep doing that. Um, that way, if something does break loose, you have a lot before you might even have a chance to react, things could be down significantly. When there hasn't been a correction in a long time, like, I'm sorry, when there hasn't been a big, ugly day in a long time, uh, you often can finally get that. You know, I don't know if that's likely in this election year. I don't think it is, but something could drive that if it's dramatic enough that's more left out of left field out of the blue black swan gray swan whatever you want to call it but it's hard to not it's hard to say anything bad here you know we talked about smh so many times and as the leader and you know that's now they've got they're set up for you know they're set up for nvidia i mean uh if that does it and that pops this thing out you know then you're 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 breaking new ground and you've got look at the slope of all your SMAs. If you're an SMA player, uh, they're about to go stack where, again, the shortest is on top of the next longest and so on. That's a really good profile to be in. Clearly, right, that profile became active right there. And look what happened. Right. So if that re if that re configures itself and kind of everything gets sorted out and they're going again, that could go, and they, you know they, they've got a they've got an AI mania, right? There's a lot of people out there that may be right. This is going to rewrite things in terms of how things work, and it's a massive, massive uh, leap. And this is going to all be wonderful. But even if it's not true, it, it won't matter until the gangs use that story. Whether you believe it or not, it won't matter until the gang decides the story is no longer relevant, right, or not believable. Um, it won't matter what we think. So if they can keep getting gas out of that, right, keep getting some fuel out of that, they're going to keep going back to that well to pump that, you know, that's just how they do it, um, and at least in my experience. Um, let's take a look at the diamonds. I don't really want to get too big into levels and all, so on and so forth, but just a reminder, right, this is the classic, right, get about barely above there, you got to hold, if not, right, that's, that's a false breakout. So you always have to be on guard for that. Again, you could have, nothing would probably be better than convincing people it was a false breakout on these big three we have already looked at, drawing in more shorts that are way too aggressive in front of EPS and then using those NVIDIA EPS to really run and gun and do what they've been doing now since the bottom in the, in the fall. Uh, but, you know, again, I, I, I don't know how you can have too many bones to pick about this. You could say, oh, I see divergence here or there. You could. I mean, I don't think it's <laughs> I don't I don't see anything right now that's going to say, well, this thing is immediately vulnerable to a massive technical dislocation of the downside. There could be something driven by news, of course. But in terms of the charts, I don't know what's going to cause that to tip that to tip over. 
everything's really acting well aside from IWM. We set, we harped on a little bit more last week. I'm harping on it a little bit more here because remember this to me in a very crude conservative way, you could say this thing's worth about somewhere near 268 was my calculation. So you could see there's a lot of potential there. And if you look, step back and look at this picture, you got this higher low, right? You got the higher high, the higher high versus here, this one. And you've got these higher lows put in, right? Higher low, this higher low versus this big low here. They're spread out pretty well, then this low. And so this does look like a leg, right? That's trying to do something. It might never get through, but if it does follow the others, it's, like I said, it's a very good sign. As I said, my canary in a coal mine remains it and the XTN. The XTN just doesn't want to just doesn't want to engage. You know, I just feel like, well, if things are so wonderful, why, you know, why are these why are goods not really coursing through the veins of the economy better? Or at least these transports aren't priced in a way that, that indicates that. I'll talk a little bit more about that in sector situation, but I don't want to belabor this, but let's just finish on. DXY, right? This has a support line that I've got in there already. You can see where that is, right? That the dollar dropping, that'll help stocks if that were to happen. It's very close to breaking down. You might as well say if it breaks that 100 at 104 ish, um, and that starts to uh, open up more downside, that's a problem. Remember, this this um, this topped out here, or be topped out here, which is certainly lower than here. So now you're going to have this, you know, you're going to have this initial leg lower, a corrective wave of that higher. And now you might be looking at another leg lower, which again, the data doesn't really support it, but Powell maybe um, and the Fed doing what they're do, told to do at the behest of whomever, um, that, really, that really may matter a lot more than the economic realities. <laughs> so it seems like it does most of the time. Um, even though the Fed's, of course, politically independent. And uh, they're independent of so many things, although I'm not sure I believe that. But you can see they did bounce yields a little bit. So it's not it's not a fait accompli. It's not over. But uh, this is, you know, getting there, right? Like that's a little bit of weakness here. You're right back and you could be in trouble on, on yields. And trouble on yields, or in other words, yields going down, same discussion we just had with the dollar. You all know what that means. That supports that supports um, the market. And then finally, we've got uh, the VIX I'll look at. And I'm not really going to chart the VIX in a way. Like, I think it's something you really can't chart the, exactly the way you would a, a standard stock or ETF chart. But the point I'm just trying to make is that, right, this is part of our um, part of our kind of contrasts, right? Lethal contrast, because usually when you get this this low, uh, it, it doesn't really stay that low for that long. And so you are looking at, right, at this point with a little more weakness, you're looking at multi-year lows. You've got to go back to pre-COVID and COVID response, the COVID madness, and then the COVID response madness. Um, you've got to go back to before that to really get to these to even lower levels than we saw late last fall i think it was back in here so you are getting down there you know so that to me is an opportunity right i think if you are someone who if you have the belief that i've got issues with this i don't think this i don't think they can pull this off i see this this and this you really want to talk to ryan and greg uh during this week or some week in the f near future while the vix is this low to maybe position yourself with some vol somewhere um, because a lot of things are relatively like not directly keyed off the VIX, but the sort of like the volatility environment to an extent um, is somewhat correlated, I think, to the VIX and individual issues, all things being equal. And if you do have a chance to get some cheap IV position here or there, it might be something that could pay off significantly, right? Given that you don't normally, and I say normally, stay down uh this at these levels for very long so just something to look at and it's sort of also the old complacency look helps you there too 
Um, there's also, is it this one? Let's see, I hope this works. And I don't think it gave me exactly what I wanted, but I'm not gonna worry about it. But I was, let me just pull up the SPY here and then we'll wrap up. But I just wanted to note that the, uh, there's my, these are, this is just one of the breadth screens I've got. And these are not, um, I don't think things are perfect out there in terms of, oh, is, is, are all the market breadth indicators, are they healthy enough? Or are they supporting the market, and what it's doing? I don't think they're perfect, but I think they're pretty good. And I, I so I think overall that the participation, there isn't this really, uh, it's not really set up for there's, there's, big dislocation where under the surface things are so bad and yet the market it, it index price is so good. Well, I've seen those divergences before and they're often early and they uh, tend to compound, but eventually they tend to matter. Uh, but this is not really in place right now. So as far as I can tell on some on a simple views like this. So yeah, is it perfect? No, is it confirm confirming or confirmational that everything's wonderful? I don't think it's that either. I just think that it's pretty solid, though. I would just call everything pretty solid. I don't see big problems like, oh no, you better you better be worried about this or that. I mean, I'm not telling you to let your guard down on risk ever, but I'm just saying that as far as like a cursory look here, um, I haven't seen it. I don't see anything on other screens that I've got that that are telling me, no, this is a problem. This is a problem. We know that a lot of the market's been left behind by inflation. But remember, we're if you're looking at the way that people perceive things, it's it's through the the well, through the futures of the major indexes and then or indices. And then we end up with, you know, the ETFs that most people like to trade, which is why we chart those. Uh, and then we go from there, right? And things kind of filter. But with the weights being the weights, right, a lot, as we saw, MAG7, it, it, to me, like, it, it's very close to trying to produce a breakout. I don't know if it will, of course, but I'm just saying that, that that's a big part of the weights. Um, and everything under the surface is at least reasonable to solid, right, reasonable to solid. So I don't have it where there's a big problem. And if you could say, well, look, rates keep creeping up and the market's ignoring that. The rates haven't crept up, right? They topped out. And that's really helped um, ever since, you know, Powell... Uh, worked his magic a few weeks back. Let's really help bring the rates down in terms of the TNX. I didn't look at everything out there, but in terms of TNX, it's down there. So I would just end on that note that um, you've got early signs of complacency. Uh, you've got early signs of these things usually precede uh, corrective activity, but it's not really where that's glaring um, and the and the breath on the other side is not telling you that's that 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 it's time to start panicking. News could do that Monday morning, right? But I'm just saying the snapshot in time we're at right now, I don't I don't think it's nearly that bad. I think most sectors are okay to good. You know, they're not some of them you could say, well, you could, well, I don't like this, I don't like that. But overall, a lot of important sectors work. There are a few troubling things I'll talk about in sector situation. I think staples outperforming and utilities going, these are not good things, but there could be other reasons for that. That's the problem with not having enough time to be dialed into the nitty gritty. You're kind of looking at things in a rough way, but th those are not good. We talked about the transports not being good. So there's a little bit you could quibble about, but overall, you know, you've got to give them their due. Um, despite everything, right? The, the gangs work their magic as usual. And so I think a lot of this is going to hinge now on how they treat these uh, these NVIDIA situations. And you just you're at a critical time because you're approaching that. Is it a real breakout? Is it a false breakout? Do, you know, does do the, is it roll over from here? Uh, do they put in sort of a double top because you didn't really break out that far? Uh, your, your, your lower high is out of the question, clearly, but you could still argue, well, it's almost a double top or it's a false breakout, a slight false breakout could be real though, right? That's the whole thing. So you're at a tough, you're at a tough spot, but you've got to wait for this to prove itself. And I think, uh, knowing how they hang their hat on and the price action is sort of is draped upon the skeleton of news items generally. And that's why the economic calendar has got to be there. And you've got to be apprised of that. 
um, that to me is uh, what you what what they're going to do. So if they're going to reverse the market, and aside from out of the blue, I think it's got to be on something awful that ha happens at NVIDIA or becomes sell on news where it's great and they just sell it anyway. Um, if they're going to keep going, I would assume it's going to be on good NVIDIA news that, and just, again, people, um, people that maybe the hedgies got short uh, too early and um, maybe picked overvalued stocks like they perceived NVIDIA and other related ones, and they shorted those, and now they're in big trouble, and those help lead things as they have been uh, for a lot of the year. They didn't really recently, but for a lot of the uh, early part of the year and certainly last fall, they did. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up. Long one, but you know, a lot of stuff with the tabs. Just wanted to share those for a change because I still am seeing early signs of the stuff we've seen that precede short-term tops at the very least. Not this week. I don't see that as something imminent. But it's sort of like, okay, pieces are starting to fall in place. So if they do make an egregious upside scamper to end May or into June or something, and it gets really crazy, it might be, uh, you know, we might be a little uh, more cautious and or anticipate a little bit of a pullback at that point. But again, we have to do, that's an if then. So we've got to wait on a lot of this stuff. So have a great week. Uh, stick with your DDA. Discipline dictates action. And um, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I hope you got something out of watching this video. Well, we're going to be doing the sector situation quickly. And um, that's about it for now. So thanks again for tuning in. Take care.